Hello, good evening and welcome to your free spa for frazzled folks. So this started way back in 2020 during the pandemic when it just seemed too frazzling for anybody, especially people who were working to keep everyone else going. So uh, people working in the health service, social care, people who were um, health and safety people, human resources people pretty much everybody, anybody who was being affected by the pandemic. And here we are all this time on, who knew we would still be in a very different state, although we're a little bit unlocked. And here we are. So here is our monthly spa. And I'm just so glad that you're here watching this with me. And tonight I'm going to focus on the S word, which I will explain in a moment or two. And once I've done a little bit of talky bit, just getting you thinking, the first bit really is about raising your own awareness of your stresses and your habits that may be contributing to the amount of stress that you experience. And then we'll get into the good stuff, actually doing the practical things to help you switch off, relax and feel better. And we will end with a little relaxation on a Maldives beach. So if that's all right with you, if you don't mind, you know, I mean, it's a terrible kind of pressure to ask you to spend some time on a beach relaxing, but um, I'm sure you'll carry on bravely. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to start well, oh, and of course, we're going to be having our foot spa. Now, if you've already got your feet in the water, that's absolutely fine. You might want, we're going to have a, a five or so minute break um, partway through to give you an opportunity to fill your bucket or bubble bath or foot spa, whatever you've got. Um, and if you've already got your feet in the water and you wanted to top up with some warm water at that point, then you can. So I hope you're as comfortable as you can possibly be wherever you are and that you're going to enjoy what we do next. So what on earth am I talking about with this S word? It's one of the most dangerous words when it comes to people who get too busy. And the S word I'm talking about is should. How many shoulds have you got going on? I should lose weight. I should eat less. I should move more. I should drink more water. I should worry less. I should earn more. I should spend less. I should tidy up. I should declutter. I should fix everything. What is the size of your to-do list at the start of your day? Is it actually a weekly to-do list that you're expecting yourself to do in a day? What are the things that you put yourself under? What kind of pressures do you put on yourself and how does that work out for you? Because one of the things that we know is that when you have very high expectations and you don't meet them, you're likely to get one of these out. And um, I reckon you've probably got one of these, whether you realize it or not. And we get it out to use it when we haven't done what we thought we should. So, oh, I can't believe I didn't get that finished. Oh, I did that, but it wasn't perfect. Oh, no, I've had a disaster. What a shocking disaster. There's all these things during the day that you beat yourself up for. And you can't tell me it doesn't happen because we even have an emoji. We have a face palm emoji, an emoji for smacking yourself in the face when you've got something wrong. Now then, how good is that for you? It's not. It's not good for you. It sets off the stress chemicals adrenaline and cortisol. And those two things affect your ability to sleep well, your ability to digest well, affects your immune system, makes you dehydrated, makes you worry about things that normally you'd be able to handle quite easily. It affects you in more ways than you realize. So we can start to realize those red flags and uh, somewhere I probably have a little book that uh, you could get on Amazon, Burnout Buster, which has 33 red flags that warn you that you're heading for burnout, 33 things to do about them. But this isn't about promoting my book. It's only $3.99, $2.99 if it's an ebook. Um, it's not about promoting I wasn't even planning to tell you about that, but I'm mentioning these red flags and that's why I thought I'd flag it up. <laughs> no pun intended because we need to start noticing those things. Now, there's two parts to this. One is that you notice 
the little clues that you're getting a little overwhelmed. There's a bit too much going on. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Your expectations are up here, whereas your actual capacity is here somewhere. When we, when we notice that, the second part, of course, is doing something about it. Because if your awareness is good, that's a good thing. But sometimes we have an awareness, but then we don't actually act on it. And you might even say to somebody, oh, I know I'm stressed because I've started getting really clumsy or I feel tearful or I've got the urge to run away or I just want to scream or I'm not sleeping well. And you're actually talking to somebody else about those warning signs. But then you don't do anything about it. And we're all as bad. I'm hopefully a little better than I used to be because I teach this stuff and I live and breathe it. But still, there are times where I go, oh, I know what's going on here. I've given myself too much to do. And it's all been about the shoulds. So what shoulds do you have? Now, if you want to, you can get a pen and paper and actually jot these down. Or you could do it at another point. Um, or you could just do it in your mind as, as I'm asking these questions. So what shoulds do you have going on? So is it a should about what you should be eating or drinking is it about exercise that you should or shouldn't be taking is it about jobs that need doing is it about decorating a part of the house um, or a particular um, thing that you need to clean or you should visit somebody you should make more effort when you're talking to somebody should 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 Recognizing those things and then noticing how they make you feel is a really good stress buster. Because when you start to notice that those shoulds make you feel, well, what do you notice? Do they make you feel motivated and positive and encouraged and excited and energized? I doubt it. Usually, shoulds make you feel like somebody's bossing you about, feels like a pressure. It feels like an order. It feels like you're already in the wrong because it's not something that you've already done. So it's very, very negative. It encourages those stress hormones and it creates the stress in our bodies and our minds. And it means that we find it harder to cope. And then when we are achieving something, we dismiss it because we've not done all these millions of things that we've set ourselves. So we don't even get to enjoy the achievements that we've done. Now, um, those of you who've worked with me before will know about my care model, C-A-R-E, which is all about well-being. And what I'm basically talking about here with the shoulds is the R of the care model. Let's light it up. Da, da, da. The R of the care model is very important because the R of the care model stands for reality. How many of these shoulds are not even based in reality? They're not even things that you've got the capacity for. They're just things that you think you should do or that maybe even somebody else thinks you should do and you need to take the pressure off. Now, there's a really easy way to deal with these shoulds. And I'm going to show you that with my new, uh, new Fandangle way of doing a flip chart. <laughs> switched it off instead of switching it on here we go so this is my little electronic notepad so here we have i should oh, i should um eat more veg so here we go i should eat more veg that word should is demotivating de-energizing pressurizing stress inducing so what i want you to do is in your mind or on a piece of paper is to cross out should and instead of that you put in this new sentence if i really wanted to i here's the magic word could eat more vegetables now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to switch on this desire to eat more vegetables or go to the gym or walk more or whatever it is. What it does is it takes the word the should away, takes the pressure off so that you can think straight and you can actually start to notice what's actually going on. So let's say it was about eating veg. If I really wanted to, I could eat more veg. 
Actually, I do want to eat more veg. I just need to buy it, cook it, make it happen. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So when you play around with changing from should to could, you start to realize what you want to do and what you don't want to do. So some shoulds, when, you know, you might say I should eat more vegetables, and you think, actually, I don't want to eat more vegetables. What do I want? I want to be more healthy. Okay, so I'm going to take some supplements, some vitamins, or I'm going to do it in a in a smoothie so that I don't have to chew through kale or any of the other things that might not be so tasty. Buttered sweet corn, of course, another matter entirely. So if if you're trying to do something, you take away the should, you put could in instead, you'll be enlightened. You'll start to realize, yeah, that's why I'm not re-roofing the house, because actually right now I can't afford it. Or that's why I'm not decorating that room because I'm absolutely chock-a-block busy at the moment. I'll do it when I have time. I'll plan it in for X week's time. So that could just allows you to think about, do I want to? Do I need to? Can I afford to? Have I got the capacity for it? And you can just start to make a bit of a plan. It may even be that it's like, you know, say, for instance, I should clean the windows. Maybe you come down to the fact that actually... I haven't got the time, the inclination, I don't want to, and I could afford to have somebody else do it for me. Right, there we go, solution. But while ever it's a should, you're kind of, it's kind of in your peripheral vision. You're kind of going, la, 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 I don't really want to look at that, but it's over here. When you actually look at it and go, instead of should, I could, then you get to see what it looks like, how you feel about it, and what you're going to do instead of just going, la, 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 it's a pressure, but I'm not facing it now. So hopefully that little chat et has been useful to you to think about your shoulds, to turn them into coulds. And um, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got a video on this. So have a look and subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, and have a look for the videos should to coulds. And um, so you can in that way, you can kind of take your time to go through it and actually work on yours because it's a it's a it sounds kind of simple enough. Hopefully it sounds simple enough to get your head around, but it's really powerful when you actually write them down and then you change the sentence from should to could and just realize kind of have that little enlightenment of, oh, that's why I haven't done it and uh, decide whether you're going to do it, delegate it or delay it, whatever. Ooh, three D's. Um to see what you're going to do with it. Okay, so base your plans on the R of the care model, which is reality. (laughs) It's working now. So what's the reality? What have you got the time for? What have you got the capacity for? What have you got the inclination, the motivation for? And when you figure that out, you will have better days because you won't be cramming in all the shoulds or cramming everything in and thinking there's this kind of ugly frog of shoulds over here that you're never really going to celebrate your achievements of the day because there's always that stuff that you haven't got around to. Don't let it sit there going at you. (laughs) Get it sorted. Okay, you're going to take control of those shoulds. But right now, you're going to start to relax if that hasn't happened already. So we're going to do my very most basic thing, which is the just let go. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the main things that happen when we've had a busy day, when we've got stuff going on. There are certain things we do. We tend to frown. We clench the teeth together. We stick the tongue to the roof of the palate and we uh, hunch up our shoulders. Oh, untidy collar. Um, So we scrunch up the shoulders, we get all tight around here. That can cause headaches. All this tension can cause headaches. And we start to breathe quite short and shallow. So we're going to do all of that stuff. We're going to remedy all of that stuff in one smooth movement. So I hope you'll join in with this. So we're going to start with the breath. So we're going to take in a nice long, deep breath through the nose if that's possible. Use the mouth if your nose is a bit stuffed up. We're going to breathe in and raise the shoulders up and the eyebrows. And then we're going to breathe out, roll the shoulders back and down, relax the eyebrows, relax the jaw, let the tongue rest in the bottom palate, breathe out nice and long. Let's do that a few more times. Breathing up, breathing down, relaxing. Let's do it a few more times. Eyebrows up, eyebrows down, relax the jaw. 
keep going. Do it at your own pace. And as you're doing this, you might notice some crunches and some clicks. I did a little yoga session this morning and this afternoon. So there's much less crunching and clicking for me. That's amazing. Oh my God, it's like it works. <laughs> Do it a few more times, breathing in, breathing out. And if you want to, as you roll your shoulders back, imagine you're shrugging off everything from today that you don't need, that you just want to let go of. Do two more. One more. And then as you get to the end of that one, just lean back wherever you are. Breathe out, close your eyes for a moment or two and just allow yourself to land. Just kind of let go of your day. Notice how you are. And how quickly you can change the way the day is running. So if it's felt like a bit of a hamster wheel or your mind's been busy or your body was achy, just notice how quickly you can change that. I'm just going to catch up here on the YouTube chatting for those of you who are watching live. Thank you for being here, Mac. What good job. We've got all the past ones to dip into. Indeed. So hopefully you're only actually going to miss two. So it's only July and August. And uh, hopefully you'll reuse one. And you can do that on any day you want to. You could have a weekly one with the ones that are on the um on there. The first few that I did were on Zoom. So those aren't on YouTube because people were chatting and they were, you know, kind of more of a personal thing. So um, the, since I've been doing it on YouTube, those are on there. So I think that's about maybe four or five. I'm sure there'll be enough for you to go at. And um, Emma says she's ready to go with one daughter with her. So excited. That's brilliant. Uh, Emma's daughter was on my yoga earlier on so that's good uh, oh daughter says she's good oh you're so lovely too emma's daughter i shall maintain your privacy and not use your name on a, on a public platform but it's lovely to have you here now then we are engaging in disengaging all of that tension i call it just let go why do i call it that well, because we're just letting go of all the tension of the day, but also J-U-S-T, jaw, U is, well, it should be forehead, but that didn't make a word. So it's upper face. So I'm cheating really, but hopefully you won't mind. Upper face, shoulders and tongue. So four of the main things that we're letting go of. And then, so that's the just, and then the let go is letting go of the breath. And particularly the out breath, it's the, the out breath, especially when that's a little longer than usual, that really helps us to let go of the tension. That's the breath you do when you land on the chair or your bed oh, and you just let go. The in breath is the one we do before we lift something heavy or you help somebody push their car or you do something that you're a little bit worried about. We, we kind of garner ourselves. That starts the stress going, but the... The out breath is the one that helps us to let go. I'm getting so excited by the breathing. I'm rattling my backdrop here. That's how exciting it is. Okay, so I mentioned the care model. Some of you will already know about that, but I just wanted to do a very quick overview because it relates to all of the things that we're doing. So I'm just going to do that. And then we're going to take a little break to either top up your water or get your water if you haven't done that yet. Maybe get a drink, light a candle, get a blanket, you know, whatever you need. So, um, but first, a quick overview of the CARE model. So C-A-R-E, it's basically a distillation of all the things I've learned over the years about well-being and personal development. And I've compartmentalized those into four key areas. And then I found an acronym that fitted. And care, obviously, is a very appropriate word for a well-being model. So that seemed to seem to all fit. So the C is about our mindset. What are you focused on and how do you speak to yourself? So if first thing in the morning you do, oh, why did I? do that yesterday that's made me feel so wonky today or um, looking in the mirror and giving yourself a hard time for whether you think your nose is right or your bum's too big or just put the hammer down and use the C of the care model which stands for compassion compassion towards 
yourself kind in your mind so wake up in the morning before you do anything else before you've even got your eyes open just smile even a fake smile will set off feel good chemicals in the body and you can just decide that it's going to be a good day you're going to decide that it's going to be a good day you're going to say it you're going to make it happen so before any of that criticism or um, pessimism or you know, reaction to the weather or it's raining again before any of that starts, you have set yourself up to be uh, having a good day. So the C for compassion is about not beating yourself up and for giving yourself the kind of encouragement that, you know, if you had somebody who was there, who was rooting for you and people sometimes say, I wish I had a, had a Pam in my pocket and you just pop out every now and go, you can do it. I want you to imagine that you've got that, that you have that in your mind that there is somebody it could be me it could be a small version of yourself it could be a little angel it could be a little um furry creature of that's very cute it could be any way you want to imagine it but that in your mind's eye what's happening is that you are hearing i can do this i'm going to try uh, this is going to be good uh, i can handle this this is going to go well because one of the things that I know about confidence is that what you are saying to yourself can come true, even if it's not true. So that works for the negatives, too. So if you go, I'm going to be really rubbish at this, even if actually you're skilled in that area, if you're going, oh, I'm probably going to fail, it's probably going to be a bit rubbish, then you're going to set off the stress chemicals and you're going to be less confident and then actually might make a mistake. And then you'll be able to say, oh, told you I wouldn't be able to do it. And it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like you've set the story before you've even begun. So you start to believe those negative things. So stop doing that and start saying the positive stuff. So as I was saying, even if you say negative things to yourself, even if they're not true, you'll react as if they are. But the good news is, the same thing applies to positive things. So when you're saying positive things to yourself, like, yeah, I can do this. This is going to be easy for me. Even if actually it's going to be a bit of a stretch, when you start thinking that it's going to be easy, telling yourself it's going to be easy, telling yourself you've got the skills and the confidence and you're going to be, then the body starts to behave in that way. You'll find, you know, even your stance, you know, you're kind of looking more confident. You'll be breathing differently. We breathe in a different way when we're feeling confident or when we're just thinking about being confident. So all of those things are about being compassionate in your mind. So that's the C of the care model. The A of the care model is for acknowledgement. So one of the reasons we get stressed and burn out is that we keep pushing on and all we're focused on is what's not yet been done. When we stop, maybe partway through the day, maybe at the end of the day, and we acknowledge what's gone well, what we have achieved, not just beating ourselves up for what we didn't get around to, then we release something called serotonin in the body. And serotonin is a feel-good chemical that makes you have a feeling of success. If you have ever added something on to your to-do list in order to have the pleasure of ticking it off, then that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's about acknowledging what you've done. Sometimes you'll get to the end of the day and it just seems like you, you didn't really you didn't really achieve everything you wanted to achieve and you just feel a bit down about that, then we start to look at what you have done. So acknowledge, acknowledge what you've done. It also, if you do it at bedtime, especially if you write it down at bedtime, not on a screen because you don't want the screen making your brain think it's the middle of the day, um, which is what white screens do. You want to write it down with a pen and paper or pencil and paper. You could have a excuse for a new fancy notebook and write down the good things from that day and they don't have to be big big things don't happen very often little things happen all the time you start to notice those little things get a sense of serotonin a sense of satisfaction you will sleep better um, I go to, into all these things in more details with some very practical techniques. When I do full well-being programs in organisations, you're getting a little snippet right now. But I have got a video on the care model on, uh, on my YouTube channel if you want to know a little more about it. So the R of the care model I've already talked about because that's relevant to what we're doing uh, when we're talking about the shoulds. So that's R for reality. Set yourself realistic targets each day. And let's say you're used to setting yourself six things to do. Imagine setting yourself three things to do, achieving them, 
and feeling good instead of going, oh, I didn't get everything done today. Imagine setting yourself one key thing to achieve in the day and then achieving three. Whoa, hey, go you, be even more chuffed. So find something that works for you in the way that you uh, plan your day and be realistic about what you can achieve and what you can plan in. No back-to-back meetings, create sanity spaces. I've got another video on sanity spaces. So there's loads of stuff you can be watching when we're not having spas. Okay, right. Uh, And then the E is for energy. What do you need for energy? You need to eat, you need to hydrate, and you need to sleep. Those are the very, very key things. And then I'll add another one, which is you need to find joy. Finding joy in your life. I went for a walk today. I saw some, um, what are those deers called, Annie? The ones with the spots on that look like a Disney film. Roe deer. Roe deer. And there was a baby, baby, baby one. Honestly, the joy it gave me. Then we came round by the lake. This was Woolerton Park for those of you in Nottingham. And there was two adult swans and two cygnets all in the nest. And the cygnets were kind of half grown. So they looked quite big, but they were still fluffy. Oh, my goodness, the joy. What are you doing to find joy right now? Those were two unexpected joys. But what is it that you love that sparks you up? Because that's that's what it's all about, really. That's what we should be um, taking time to make sure is in your day. So rather than cramming all the work stuff in, and especially if you're working from home at the moment, I'm finding this so much with the organizations that I'm working with. People currently working from home all of the time or some of the time are working too many hours and not taking breaks and not having a proper lunch and not getting outside. You know, if you were going to work, you'd be commuting, you'd pop out for some lunch or you'd get outside for whatever reason. If you're working in a school, you might go out in the playground. If you um, if you need to go from office to office, you'll be outside. All these things that used to happen and people are just working straight through. Stop it. It's really not good for you. And it's not even good for getting more done. You don't get more done because you start to lose efficiency and effectiveness. So do, do, do look after yourself, whether you're uh, working, not working, whatever you're doing. Think about your routine. Is it something which is supporting your energy? Okay, right. Let me just check here. Um, I didn't know of your early Zooms. Yes, Chandra. Um, When I started in September, they were on Zoom and then we went over 100 people. So that's when they went on to YouTube. Um, So I haven't been very good at um, uh, marketing the last couple of these that I've done. So we haven't gone over the 100, but I thought, well, we'll stick to the YouTube. And then um, it means that the video is there for Uh, for use afterwards and um ali i'm watching the birds in my garden while i listen pam oh that's so lovely that's gorgeous i'm so pleased that you're getting like a double double whammy really we're doing the good stuff and you're getting the nature where you are so that's uh, that's scrumptious right we're going to take a break for some water so if you've already got your feet in your bucket then that's fine. And if you want to just stay where you are and enjoy the moment, that's fine. Put a little music on. Um, If you haven't got your bucket yet and you want to, then find yourself doesn't have to be a proper foot spa. I use a plastic storage drawer from a a storage tower. Um, It could be a washing up bowl. Somebody wants to use a litter tray. Somebody else used a massive cooking pot. Um, You can use what you want. Bubble bath, warm water um, and, uh, and enjoy. If you need to just top up with some warm then that's fine. Or grab a drink, nip to the loo, whatever you need to do. So we'll just take uh, maybe three or four minutes um, because I want to make sure we've got lots and lots of lovely time to make sure you feel fully pampered. So I'll leave you to go and do that. And I'll just twiddle my thumbs here for a little bit. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to practice what I preach and have a little hydration. Oh, mug somewhere oh here it is so if you're watching on catch up you might want to fast forward a little bit (laughs) i've got annie if you're wondering why i'm looking over there i've got annie here on uh, co-piloting being rather marvelous thank you for being here annie she's given us the thumbs up she's also joining in with some of the techniques which is marvelous we all need to do them me included i forget sometimes i'm going to get my bucket which is just off camera
Oh, just for drinking, not for this. Though. This will be warm. Thank you. Oh, gosh, that's heavy. I think I've put more water in than I usually do. Da, da, da. <laughs> Thank you, Shanna. Chantal, no, I'm not doing enough marketing. Well, not of this anyway, not of this. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been busy marketing other things and it's, uh, I meant I take my, took my eye off the ball. Maybe we need a chat. Uh, Chantal is a friend of mine who is very good at marketing. She is a marketing guru. So, uh, yeah, chewing me along there. Emma, filling a laundry basket for the daughter and me to share lovely it's the other daughter this time oh we're getting a double whammy fantastic you're going to be um having a smiley and i was in sales yes indeed i used to be in uh, i used to be a sales trainer for a little while and um guess what didn't suit me <laughs> didn't like it very much the um the content was good the research that we shared was good but yeah, not my cup of tea. I'm not a born salesperson. Right, so let me just fill you in if this is the first time you've joined me. Epsom salts. Da, da, da. You can get fancy ones that cost a fortune. You can just get the cheap ones that are just, because basically it's magnesium sulfate. <laughs> Relieves occasional constipation. <laughs> not by putting it in your bath though. Um, and uh, so it's just a natural mineral. Uh, but it's used by Olympic athletes for easing muscles. It's really, really powerful, been used for many, many years. There's something magical about it. It's almost like it just draws the tension from the body. It's really great if you're in a full bath, but also great if it's just your foot bath. So I've sprinkled a bit of that in. And what, uh, what you can do is you can get huge amounts, you know, uh, like massive bags full or buckets full off the internet. And then with the money that you've saved from not buying the posh ones, you can spend the rest of your saved money on very good quality essential oils. So that's that's worth spending your money on. So this one I've got is lavender. Some people say that and you just drop that in a few drops of that drinks of a rag. Thank you, Annie. Um, the smell of lavender sometimes makes people think of old ladies drawers of whichever kind comes to mind. And um, so you can also use rose or geranium. They're, they're both good for relaxation as well. So find the scent that works for you. But I would say try not to scrimp on essential oils because the expensive ones, the smell is just, it's just going to do you more good and last longer. Um, and don't do that thing about saving things for best either, because uh, enjoying it is really important. Pampering yourself is really important for your health and well-being. And also um, they can go a little bit stale over time. So enjoy them while they're fresh and delicious. Right, let me see where we're at. Hopefully that's enough time for everybody to do what they needed to do. And um, if you haven't already, get your feet in the water. So we're going to let our feet soak. And um, mine definitely need it because I've started wearing my flip flops again. Now we're into summer. Well, supposedly into summer. So my heels uh, look like look like I'm a farmer. <laughs> They just get ingrained with muck when um, and I had a bath yesterday, but it you know it still didn't really shift it. So I was looking forward to this, getting my uh, getting my heels sorted and all the hard skin. So just soaking your feet, just enjoying that. If you're not soaking your feet, if that's something that um, is not available to you or you've chosen not to do, worry not because when we do the reflexology on our feet, which is basically a foot massage. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to do that on your hands. So if you can't reach your feet or you're somewhere where you, you just can't put your feet in a bucket, um, 
that's fine. We'll we'll do a hand version of that. OK, so you've got your feet in and now we're going to do the magic three. So um, again, there'll be people watching who have done this with me before. And um, I would hope that you never think, oh, this again, because you know what difference it makes. So please, 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 if you're able to join in with this, because you might watch and think, eh, that looks kind of interesting. I might try it sometime. But doing it and feeling the difference it makes means you're much more likely to, to do it. And these three things are great for energizing. They're also great for switching off at the end of the day and releasing tension so that you can sleep better. Just generally, whenever you're feeling a bit, a bit meh, they're brilliant for that. So I call it the magic three. And they are three things from uh, Kundalini Yoga. Kundalini Yoga is slightly different from your average yoga. And it's all about raising the energy and uh, brightening you up to your full self. So anyway, let's do the first one, which is an ad adrenal twist. The adrenal glands are just in the base of the spine here near the kidneys. And um, the non-scientific version of this is imagine you're a flannel and you need to wring out the adrenaline that uh, the stress has, has uh, raised. So that's what we're going to do. And what we're going to do, we're going to put the hands on the shoulders. Those of you who did yoga with me earlier already had a one, one go of this one today. Fingers at the front, thumbs at the back, and your elbows are level with your shoulders. So you're making a T shape with your arms. We're going to twist to the left and breathe in and twist to the right and breathe out. And once you've got the hang of that, Close your eyes and take your focus inside. Breathe in to the left, breathe out to the right. You might need to wedge your feet if you're on a twizzly chair like I am. Now, if uh, you want to do that slowly, you can choose the pace. If having your shoulders up like this is painful or achy for you, you can put one hand on each upper arm and twist in that way. You must do what's comfortable for you. Twisting left and right, breathing into the left, breathing out to the right. And if you want to add another layer to that, then as you breathe left, imagine you're breathing in a healing white light. And as you twist to the right, you're breathing out and letting go of anything you don't need. When I used to go to an in-person Kundalini yoga class, we sometimes would do this for three minutes. And honestly, if you get a chance, just do it. Put a little timer on, do it for three minutes. And the difference, or longer, it's absolutely incredible. You feel like you've had a, a car wash from the inside. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do this for a count of five. So if you want to and it's comfortable, speed up for the last bit. One, five, four, three, two, one. Come to stillness. Let your hands rest in your lap. And just with your eyes closed for a minute, just notice how you feel. Notice your heart rate and your breathing beginning to settle. Notice how you feel. Lovely. So open your eyes so you can see what we're going to do next. We're going to do something which is called camel ride. And this is if you've done yoga before, you might know where you get on your all fours and you arch your back and then dip your back. It's a bit like that, but I'm not going to get you on the floor. Uh, we're going to do this sitting up. So basically you push your chest forward and what you're trying to create an arch in your spine. Your chin stays here. We're not kind of tilting the head back your chin stays there and then arch like a little turtle and you keep doing that breathe in as you push forward breathe out as you curl back when you feel like you've got the hang of it close your eyes take your focus inwards and as you're doing that concentrate on arching your spine as much as you can comfortably there's a saying in yoga that you're as young as your spine is so we're bringing youth to our spine in flexing it encouraging lubrication in the spine keep going go at the pace that feels right for you you can do this really quickly 
can do it really slowly or somewhere in between. And then we'll do that for five, four, speed up for the last bit if you want to, three, two, and one. Eyes closed, come to stillness, notice how you feel. I'm noticing a lot more tingling. I'm noticing it feels like my circulation's been encouraged. <sighs> feels good. <laughs> Okay, open your eyes and we've saved the best to last. I'm glad Emma's here live because this is Emma in, of all the people I know, Emma is the person who loves this, the best of all. She's a, she's a great advocate of what we're about to do. In parts of Africa, it's used as medicine. So you would go to the doctor and they would tell you um, in which way to do this uh, for your particular ailment. And it's, it's like a massive wake up call for your nervous system to just reset and release the tension. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to shake. So we're going to start by flapping our hands. Um, so you're not moving the hand, you're flapping them like a toddler who's just learned to wave. There's something magical about the nerve endings in your wrist here. So that's what we're activating here. Then start to shake your hands sideways as if you're shaking water off and then bring your elbows in and then get your shoulders involved. And then if it's comfortable for you, take your hands above your head. This is when it gets really powerfully energizing. And if you haven't got your feet in a bucket and you want to stand up and shake your legs as well, that's also fine. You could do this at another point in time, shake your whole body. Brilliant thing to do before you go to sleep. It's an excellent thing to do in the afternoon if you're heading for the biscuit tin and you'd rather not. Then you feel that sluggishness, you feel tired, feel like you need a little sugar lift. Well, actually, you might need a good shake just to wake everything up. Your energy isn't gone and you don't need to find it in the kitchen. It's underneath underneath that sluggishness all that sitting round that you've been doing give it a really good shake we love to do this to music in the feel good club that meets every week we have a live call in the feel good club and we often put taylor swift shake it off on uh, on video and we dance around and give it a good shake right we're going to do this five seconds more so give it a good shake five four three two one, hands in your lap, eyes closed, just breathe, just be. <sighs> just notice how it feels, give yourself a moment. <sighs> and then gently opening your eyes. <laughs> shake it shake it says emma yep it's brilliant emma even sent me a video of her and her colleagues doing this in the office so it was a lovely lovely thing to see okay so just notice how you feel and if you want to um if you're here live or if you're watching on catch up feel free to write a comment about which of those three things made a difference for you which one you um kind of felt you know was your thing and um and whether you think you'd do it again when when and where would you do it i'm just gonna take a little drink mm. lovely okay now we're on to massage oh lovely and i wasn't show i wasn't planning to show you this but i'm, I'm just can't resist showing my new toy which is a human head um just around here, coming out of the brain, the longest cranial nerve, which is the vagus nerve, comes around here, around the ear, down the throat. The, it comes out both sides. We have to imagine that there's an ear on this side because it's the brain on this side. Here's the other vagus nerve. So it's terribly scientific, this vagus nerve, you know. And um, that's really... The, a really, really good reason to be moving this top half of our body as we're doing in this session here so that we are 
uh, getting rid of that tension that might be blocking that vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, the longest cranial nerve, is all about rest and digest. So it helps us to switch off and relax and be less stressed, and it helps us to properly um, have, a, have a healthy digestive system because stress messes up our digestive system. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do um, head, neck and shoulder massage. And one of the things that will happen as we're doing that is that vagus nerve will be illuminated with the lovely things that we're going to do. We're going to start with the shoulders. In fact, I'm just going to take my shirt off because I'm feeling a bit warm. I like the twists best. Yeah. And when you do them for like a few minutes at a time, oh my God, you'd be thinking, how did something so simple make such a difference? It really is quite incredible. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a shoulder massage. So I want you to use this movement on this big muscle here, the trapezius. Kind of think about connecting your neck and your shoulder, that muscle there. So you're going to take a, a nice big grip of that and take a nice deep breath in. Squeeze that muscle. Be careful if there is a lot of tension there and then let go as you breathe out. And then continue to do nice, long, deep breaths and give that muscle some nice, deep squeezes. Now you can stay there if you want, or you can be up your neck, down to the edge of your shoulder and do that a few times. If you want to, you can go over the back and into the kind of around the bone of your shoulder blade with the tips of your fingers. Make little circles if that's what you're having to go at. And you might be able to find bits that are, ha, ah, there's one that's really quite sore. It feels quite hard, quite sore. Don't be in there like, I need to sort this out. But just firmly with kindness, giving that some attention. And that would suggest that you need to do this more often. And you might find bits that are a bit crunchy, where there's a calcium buildup because there's tension there. And just having a little look around, getting to know your own body. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to end this call and be a qualified massage therapist. But what you are going to be is somebody who's a bit more aware of their own self and hopefully a little bit more likely to give yourself some of this therapy yourself. OK, we're going to take that muscle again, a deep breath in, a deep squeeze. Hold it, hold the breath, hold the muscle and let go. And then we're going to dust the shoulder. So the funny version of this is that you're dusting off any rubbish anybody's been trying to throw at you today. Other people's nonsense, OPN, other people's nonsense is NMS, not my stuff. You can use a different word beginning with S if you want. But actually, what we're also doing is we're affecting the fascia, which is just beneath the skin and has um, a huge connection to the nervous system. So it's kind of we're clearing everything out. Now, just notice I can feel a real difference. I feel like, whoa, I'm in two halves here. So uh, let's do the same the other side. We're using this big gripping motion on that muscle. Breathe in and squeeze. And let go. And then continue just as we did on the other side. You can stay there with that big trapezius or you can go up and down or you can go over the back and have a little look around there or a combination. Hmm. Lovely. Remember to breathe nice and long as you're doing this, because as soon as you start to take a longer breath, and this is true for anything that you might do, start to breathe the muscles will soften so breathe nice and long the message to your brain then is it's all right it's all right to to relax so as you breathe nice and long as you do this that's going to soften those muscles and it's going to be much easier to release the tension and you can do that while you're doing anything else waiting for the kettle to boil waiting for the computer to load um, waiting in traffic sitting on a bus just any time you think, oh, I'm a bit stressed or oh, when I did that breathing thing, whatever comes to mind, something that worries you any time that that kind of happens. Just start to breathe a little longer, a little deeper, and it will make a difference. Right. Let's take a big grip and a big breath. Hold the breath, hold the muscle. 
<sighs> let it all go. Give it a little dust. Yes, let him go, let him go, let him go. Oh, lovely, lovely. All right, just to finish off, let's just roll the shoulders a bit. And if you're noticing all the crunches and the clicks and the sore bits and whatever, it's just a message. Let the mess become a message to do this more often and uh, give yourself a little bit of time. You think about how much time you spend for other people. Spending a little bit of time for yourself to recharge your batteries, absolutely essential. Right, I'm going to take my glasses off. If you wear glasses, you might want to do the same just now. And um, we're going to do a little bit of a head massage. So first off, we're going to take two fingers to the temples, little circles. Again, remember to breathe nice and long as you do that. And then we're going to take the fingers down to the jaw joint. All that. Open your mouth a little bit as you do this and so you're properly loosening the jaw. So much tension comes when you're concentrating, when you're stressed or just, you know, immersed in something that you're focused on. It gets very tight. Come down the jaw to the chin. <laughs> Lovely. And then we're going to go into the hairline. We're going to do little circles. So you might have your thumbs in the temples, fingers in your hair and then move to the back. And ideally, rather than kind of rubbing your head, you're, it's more like this, you're kind of moving the skin, your fingers staying on the same bit of skin, but you're moving the skin in little circles. And then take your thumbs to the back here, so you're right in the base of the skull. I really like that bit, I feel like, whoa, get in there. But be careful, because it might be tender bit, so be kind as you're doing that. And then we're going to come back to the sides and we're going to start to play with our ears, pulling the ears a little bit, stroking with the thumb. Now, what we're doing now is we are affecting that vagus nerve that helps us to rest and digest because the vagus nerve comes closest to the surface in our ears. And then pull the lobes down like this. Lovely. And then we're going to take a finger into each ear, not into the hole, but just in that little shelf above. And then just make little circles in there because that's where we're closest, even closer to the vagus nerve. Remember to breathe nice and long as you're doing it. You want to relax. Tell the brain and the body all is well. Lovely. Okay, now we're going to just finish off with a little facial stimulation. So you're going to drum your fingers on your forehead and then draw that all the way down to your chin and then start over again at the top. You can come around the sides a bit more the next time, down the middle, just a little pitter patter. Again, we're affecting the fascia. There's a lot of nerve endings in the face. Obviously, we've got a lot of senses going on in the face, a lot of nervous nerve, nerve endings. Okay. And then bring your hands in your lap and just breathe for a moment or two, noticing how that feels. When might you be able to do that? Just give yourself a little moment. <sighs> Lovely. OK, so we are now going to. Um, oh, I know what we're going to do. Just one more thing with the head and neck. I'm going to just start to nod the head. And again, nice long breaths as you do that. Do very gently. If you've had any whiplash problems or any other neck issues, do this very slowly and only go as far back as feels comfortable. And as you're doing that, I want you to imagine that you are busy saying yes to all the things you want to say yes to. Oh yes, I'll have some of that, thank you. Oh, salted caramel ice cream, thank you very much. <laughs> I've just discovered dairy-free salted caramel ice cream. Apologies if you're trying to avoid sugar right now. <laughs> saying yes to 
people helping you, saying yes to other people being generous, saying yes to people giving you compliments, and then come to stillness. And let's shake the head. Let's say no to the stuff that's too much, that's beyond reality, beyond a realistic expectation. This is obviously good for your neck, but it's also good psychologically to be thinking about what do you need to say no to? What do you need to say no or not yet or not mine that you need to let go of? Okay, come to stillness and then take your ear to the shoulder. So you're just kind of going sideways a little bit and then to the other side. Breathe as you're doing it. Soften those muscles. And then come back to the center. If you had your eyes closed, then open your eyes. And now we're gonna we're gonna play with your feet. <laughs> How very lovely. So um, if you're not doing your feet and you'd rather use your hands, I will fill you in on what to do. But first, what I'd like you to do is you're gonna take your left foot out of the water um, and Try hard to work out which your left foot is. <laughs> and you're going to dry that foot as if it's the foot of somebody really adorable that you really love. You're going to dry all in between the little toes. You're going to dry that foot really, really caringly. I don't know what you normally do when you hop out of the shower or the bath. You know, some people just stamp their feet on the bath mat and that's it. But think about taking some time. You know, as if this is the foot that carries you around. This is the foot that gets you places. It can speed up and slow down. It does all kinds of amazing things. So imagine you're thanking your foot as you're doing it, drying it really nicely. Now, if you've got some foot lotion that you want to use, you can put that on now as well. And... If you haven't got foot lotion, that's fine. Just make sure that your foot is completely dry. And then I'm going to put something on my foot. I'm going to show you in a sec. And these are available on the internet. I don't sell them. There's no commission going on or anything. But it's a way of doing reflexology and being able to tell which bit's which. So reflexology is the study of the different pressure points on the feet being connected to the different parts of the body. So let me just show you what I've got going on here. So this is a reflexology sock and it shows you which parts of the body refer to uh, different parts of the foot. So what you can do is um, if you wanted to, you could get some of these or you could just print off a map off the internet and have the picture there, or just have it on, on a device on a screen so you can see which bits. So the idea is when we manipulate the different parts of the foot, it affects different parts of the body. So the we're gonna start with the tips of the toes, which is your sinuses. And ideally you use a little uh, circular motion like this. I would imagine you're not gonna be holding your foot in the air. You're gonna probably have it on, the, uh, on your other leg. And uh, you could use your thumbs like this just to manipulate the tips of the toes, which is the sinuses, little circles. The rest of the big toe is the relates to the head and the neck. So give that some love. And then the little pads just beneath your toes represent the eyes and the ears. Now, if you're using your hand instead of your foot, you can also get uh, gloves for the hands uh, and and it's pretty much the same thing if you imagine you're standing up and this is your sinuses and this is your pelvis it's pretty much the same as you go down the hand um, in terms of going down the foot so just imagine oh, that nearly went that was nearly my phone in the foot bath but it wasn't so 
<sighs> breathe and let go of the tension. <laughs> and he's giving me a round of applause. Right. So uh, what we're going to do next, the next bit is your the ball of your foot, which is the thyroid, the heart and the lungs. So giving it little circles this way and across there is your shoulder. Now, you might find while you're doing this that there's a bit that feels a bit sharp, a bit sore. And it's likely that that relates to a part of your body that needs some attention. So the very first time I had reflexology, I had some stomach problems, which I hadn't told the reflexologist about. And she reached the stomach part and, oh, it was like she'd put a needle in my foot. I thought I didn't come for acupuncture. And, um, and it, was, it was because I'd got those stomach problems. So if you notice something, then just ease off a little and be kind. And you might want to investigate that part of your body. OK, so all of the stomach area, we've got the intestines, the bladder, the kidneys, and then we come down to the heel, which is the sciatic nerve. So you're kind of using your thumbs going all the way down or if you're using your hand, little circles in this way. All the way down to the heel, heel of the hand or the heel of the foot. OK, now let's give a round of applause to our feet. Clapping on both sides, on the top and the bottom. Again, we're affecting the fascia, all the nerve endings. Excuse me. And then we're going to do the other foot. So notice how that foot feels in difference to your right foot. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to take the foot out of the water and we're going to dry it like we really, really care. Like we really, really love that foot. We really, really love the person who that foot belongs to. We're showing them we care by drying it so carefully in between the toes. And like this foot really matters. Like it, it does so much hard work. We stuff it into shoes. We expect it to cope with walking barefoot sometimes. We expect it to keep going no matter what. Well, I finally got rid of my flip-flop grub. <laughs> Sorry, that's probably a bit of an overshare, really. But <laughs> Okay, when that's dry, if you've got some lotion you want to put it on, then do. And I'm going to put on my other sock. We're going to do the same thing again. So if you remember, we start with the sinuses at the tips of the toes. So that's where we're going to start. <laughs> I've got this one a bit skew with. So it might be a bit like a clown shoe now. So take, take the tips of the toes and give them some attention. That's your sinuses. Give some love to the rest of the big toe, which is the head and neck. Beneath the toes here, the eyes and the ears. And then all around the ball of the foot, the heart, the lungs and the thyroid. And then over to that side is your shoulder. And then all the digestive system going on in the middle here. And if you, as I was saying before, if you find a place that's got, like, oh, I really feel something happening there, then you might want to look it up. You know, you could easily look up um, reflexology on the internet and figure out which part of the foot that was. OK, so working your way all the way down to the heel of the hand or the heel of the foot, whichever you're doing. And then let's give it a round of applause. Thank you, foot. Thank you for all you do for me and how much I ignore you and just expect you to keep coping. <sighs> and just notice how that feels. And what you might notice is whilst you've dealt specifically with your feet, that the rest of you feels a little bit eased off too there is really something in reflexology the um when you when you look at so let me just get this out again when you look at the nervous system and uh, this the um which bits are the nervous system any of the yellow bits yeah. and he worked this out for me the other day the yellow bits and you could look at your whole body in terms of the nervous system so you know we're all used to seeing skeletons and you might also have seen where you just see the muscles of the body but also there's a whole map of the nervous system right the way through the body from tip to toe 
And when we start to realize how that all connects, then manipulating the feet can affect any other part of the body when we we know which bit maps to which bit it's very very powerful so um so do do have a think about doing that uh, at another point in time okay so how are you let me know write a comment and if this is something that you think oh, gosh that really helps that's uh, you know if you notice that you have a better night's sleep Feel free to catch up uh, with this one. The, the uh, recording of this will be on my YouTube channel um, and the other ones that I've done on YouTube. So have a look. There's also something called switch off techniques that I've done as a playlist. So there's lots of things that can help you there. I hope you'll take advantage of them whenever you need it. And this may sound a bit odd, but I actually watch my own videos sometimes because there are some times where a dentist can't take their own teeth out, you know, <laughs> where I just, you know, my head's all a bit fuzzy or I'm feeling stressed or I just quite not quite sure what I need. And so I'll listen to one of my own relaxation videos and uh, um, and that helps me to switch off. So, um, yeah, when you just don't know what to do, just switch on a video. OK, so guess what? It's time to go on holiday, my darling. We are going to the Maldives. I hope that's all right with you. So if you're sitting up and you've got your bucket there and whatever, then you might want to, I'm just gonna move mine out of the way. I'm gonna just splosh it, <laughs> bend the backdrop. It's all going on. Right, so um, we're going to the Maldives, so it's probably appropriate that uh, I've splashed warm water on the floor because it feels kind of beach-like. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go off to the Maldives. So if you want to now, you can stay as you are if you want, but if you want to fully lie down, fully switch off and just enjoy your time on the Maldives beach, then here we go. Let me just share my screen and get that on where's it gone it's disappeared right i just need to go find it it's uh, gone behind something else <laughs> i love a seamless situation Right, I will be with you shortly. I'm just going to see if I can make the video appear. I've got it playing, but it's not appearing. Ah, there we go. Right, here we go. I hope you enjoy this. So what you can do now is you can watch the video for a little while and just kind of get that picture set in your mind's eye and then whenever you're ready close your eyes and imagine yourself there make sure no parts of your body are crossed over so that the blood can flow and the muscles are softened breathe in Breathe out. And soften your shoulders. Allow yourself complete relaxation. You might be able to imagine the warmth of the sun on your face. Almost like it's warming you through to your bones. The ebb and flow of the sea is so rhythmic, it's almost like it's in time with your breath. There's even a slight saltiness to your lips from the sea breeze. The sky is so blue. The sand is warm and you're lying down on the most gorgeous sunbed 
nothing that you need to do except just be here and breathe. Breathing in the fresh air, the scent of tropical flowers on the breeze. Feeling the ebb and flow of the sea, matching the ebb and flow of your breath. And then maybe you decide it's such a beautiful day and the sun has energized you and you decide to take a little walk along the edge of the water. And you can see the imprint of your feet on the sand, feeling the slightly cooling water trickling over your toes as you walk. This is a place just for you. You're safe and warm and there's a nice cool breeze around your head so you don't get too hot. The feel of the sand between your toes, the warmth of the sun on your face, the sound of the ebb and flow of the water. Notice how it makes you feel. Reminding you that these moments of calm where you get to replenish are essential for you to be able to do the things you need to do. As you walk, you can see up in the sky, there's a bird the most beautiful bird. And for a moment, you wonder what it might be like to fly. And now you know what it's like. You are the bird with the sun on the back of your wings and you're flying and yet without any effort because you're just wheeling in the warm air thermals, tilting just the very tips of your wing feathers to go left or right, whichever way you want to go. And then occasionally a flap of your strong, enormous wings to take you higher into that blue sky. And far below, you can see the beautiful turquoise of the sea. And the way that the sun catches the tips of the waves makes it look like it's a place full of diamonds. You can see beautifully colored fish beneath the water. But you're not hunting today. You're just admiring, just enjoying, just acknowledging the beauty of everything you can see. And with grace and with ease, you drift all the way back down to your sun lounger. And you are yourself once again, lying down, Breathing out and allowing yourself to just be supported. The weight of you held by the chair. The ebb and flow of the waves. The taste of salt on your lips. The warmth of the sun drying your face a little. the rhythm of the sea and the rhythm, the balance of your breath brings you into a place of calm, realizing that all of this beauty, all of this joy is within you anytime you need it. 
breathing in, breathing out. Relaxing your shoulders, your face, head and neck. And for a moment, realizing that that beautiful place is within you and you can access it any time you need to. This is your place. You're safe here. And you can make it whatever you want to. A beautiful place just for you. Breathing in, breathing out, realizing just how amazing you are. Acknowledging all the things you've achieved, all the things you are. Giving yourself acknowledgement. And then beginning to gather up all of the beauty of this place, all of the warmth, all of the clear blue sky. And you can either gather it with your mind or you can put your hands out and imagine you're scooping it up and into yourself. Scooping it with your hands and holding it inside yourself. Realizing that whilst you had a guide, you have made that place in your mind's eye and you can access it any time you need to. Take in a nice long deep breath as you anchor in that beautiful feeling, that beautiful place inside of you. Breathe out and relax. And begin to move your fingers and your toes very slowly, beginning to bring movement into your body. Gently stretch and do whatever you need to do to slowly and carefully bring yourself back into this moment. Very slowly bringing yourself back. And when you're ready, gently opening your eyes. I'm just going to leave the beach there for a moment or two longer. So you can just enjoy the rhythm of the tide, the blue of the sky, the turquoise of the sea. <sighs> what a lovely place to be. I suspect maybe that your beach was even more lovely. I wonder what you imagined in your particular place. And anytime you want to go there, you can create whatever you want. You could have a fun fair on the beach if you wanted to. You could have somebody giving you a massage. You could create whatever you want. And remember the thing I said earlier, which is that the mind will believe it to be true, even if it's not. So you imagine yourself having a lovely massage. You will feel more relaxed. Um, even though it might not be happening in person live in that moment. So we're almost at the end of our June spa. And thank you for joining me, uh, especially thank you for joining me if you're live. Um, but also if you're watching on catch up, well done for making the time. There's something about having a ticket for a live event that means you turn up. Um, whereas watching on catch up, we've really got to make the time for that. So well done you too. And uh, I am probably, well, I'm definitely going to be doing some stuff over the summer. Whilst I'm not going to do another one of these until September when it will all be refreshed and rebooted. 
but I will be doing some stuff over the summer. So um, I would be delighted if you don't already get my Monday message, then go to the website pamburrows.com in order to um, sign up for the Monday message. It's at the bottom of each page. And that means that you'll, you'll get every Monday morning at 6 a.m. You don't have to read it at 6 a.m., but that is when it comes. Uh, every morning, uh, every Monday, every Monday morning at 6 a.m., you'll get a little newsletter, a little bit of news, a video technique, just a, a short burst of positivity and well-being for you every Monday. But also you'll get notification of the other things that I'm going to do. So um, partway through last year, I started something called the Feel Good Club and we meet weekly as a live call on Zoom. And we do these kinds of techniques, but we get into some really in-depth conversations about mindset and psychology and uh, our own personal development. It's a, it's a really, really wonderful and enjoyable group that people are really getting lots out of. So if you'd like to know more about that, please email me, um, pam at pamburrows.com. Um, it's hosted on Kajabi. You don't need to worry about that part of it. But uh, if you find me, uh, Pam Burrows on Kajabi, spelled K-A-J-A-B-I, you'll be able to find the Feel Good Club on there. And uh, if you'd like to join us, then uh, I'd be delighted. Now, if we were in person, the thing I would do now is I would ask you to choose whether you'd like a gold sticker or a silver sticker, but hey, they're virtual, so you can have both. And the idea is that you'd stick it somewhere, you can stick it where you like, but you stick it somewhere that you're gonna see it on a regular basis. And it's to remind you that you are a star, someone truly amazing. And when you get all shiny, you go, really, Pam? That's what the R is for. Yes, really, someone truly amazing, really. I know that you will have tuned in to this spa because you need a little bit of something. You need a little bit of time, a little bit of recharge. And so I hope that along with that, you realize how amazing you are, what you're putting in and the need to be able to, to recharge your batteries in order to do all the things that you do for everybody else. Even if you feel like you're not doing enough, don't do that. You are doing enough. You're doing the very best you can with what you've got in very difficult circumstances. And if you just pull back a bit, you know, sometimes um, Olympic champions do better when they win the gold medal. It's because they trained a little less and rested a little more. It's all part of peak performance is not trying too hard. So I hope that you'll look after your very precious self and um, let me know if I can help in any way. If your workplace needs a well-being program um, or just a quick boost, then let's have a chat about that. And what else was I going to talk to you about? Oh, yes, I was going to finish off with a hug. So what I'd like you to do just before we go is place one hand on one arm and one on the other and squeeze and then with your eyes closed just rock gently left and right now this is another little adrenal twist but at the same time the mind thinks oh we're having a hug and then it releases something called oxytocin and oxytocin is very very good for helping you to feel good and it's good for a healthy heart as well so i'll leave you with a little squeeze. I hope that you've enjoyed what we've done tonight and that you enjoyed that little squeeze at the end. When you release oxytocin, you also get a burst of nitric oxide, not nitrous oxide, laughing gas, that's a different thing, nitric oxide, which widens the blood vessels. So even a pretend hug is going to give you oxytocin and then nitric oxide and a healthier heart. So my heart reaches out to your heart to remind you to look after your precious self. And I'll see you next time. If you signed up for the Monday thing, the Monday message, there's going to be some new stuff coming out over the next few weeks that I'm very excited about. Something that's going to help you daily to 
form new habits you know those things you go oh I know I should drink more water I know I should relax at the end of the day I know I should sleep well but how I'm going to give you some stuff to do that with and it's very exciting going to tell you more about that in the Monday message as uh, we go over the next few weeks so if you've got any questions or any comments um, you can put them here or you can send me an email to pam at pamboros.com find my new website it's very exciting because it's all pink it's all gone pink and um, thank you for joining me can't thank you enough for being engaged in this it's been such a joy I hope you've got something out of it and uh, do tell people that you know who need a bit of uh, relaxation they can use the ones that we've got on the channel for catching up um, and uh, keep an eye out for the one in September when we get going once again okay that's all from me from me to you in with the peace out with the love Have a great sleep tonight and a wonderful day tomorrow. Lots of love.